A lot of people have Moog Mother 32s, and for many, the reason they got it is that this is their gateway into the land of modular synthesis. And that way, I view this as kind of like your first car. It's a lot of fun to get it home and drive it all by itself, but it's even more fun to customize it and make it truly your own. Well, one of the most common ways that people customize their Mother 32s or other similar semi-modular synthesizers is to add a second oscillator to them. That allows you to detune them slightly to create a fatter, beating, coarse sort of sound. It also allows you to tune them to different musical intervals, such as fourths, fifths, octaves, and the such. However, if it's a fat sound that you're after, there is another path, and that is to use a waveform animator. That can create the sound of several oscillators that are slightly detuned. I'll show both in this quick movie. Now, the first thing you might notice is that I'm using an Expert Sleeper's FH1 as my MIDI interface instead of the mother's own MIDI jack. That's because the FH1 allows me to get a lot more information out of my controller keyboard. In addition to note and gate, it also gives me velocity for how hard I strike a note. It gives me aftertouch. It gives me mod wheel. It gives me a voltage output for my sliders. And it even has built-in LFOs. I can go ahead and play around with the speed of that LFO and the depth of it. Now instruments like the Mother 32 do have a couple built-in waveforms. For example, the Mother has a built-in sawtooth wave which looks like that when I view it on an oscilloscope, like my Mordax data, very handy utility. And they often have some form of pulse or square wave, which look like that. They're in sync, but in the case of the square wave, you have the ability to add some animation in terms of changing its pulse width. Sawtooths by themselves can be rather static, which means you have to add all of your animation with your filter, etc. at least with square waves. You can go ahead and change your pulse width to create a more interesting sound. And there's that start of that chorused sound, which sounds a bit fatter than just a single sawtooth all by itself. Let's go ahead and add in a second oscillator we were talking about. If you're using the MIDI input on the Mother 32, you'd want to take the keyboard output and run it to your oscillator, or even better, run it through a buffered mult and then run it to your oscillators. In this case, I'm already running my fader host to a buffered mult. One copy is going to the volt per octave input on the Mother 32, and I'll run this other copy to the input on a disting. Pretty simple, basic oscillator, but it has a nice fat sawtooth. I'll pull my square wave for now, and instead take the saw out of the disting. Plug that in in its place. There we get to take a look at it, and I'll run that through the multiple on the data to my external audio input so I can mix between them using the mix control on the mother. Now, the reason these waveforms are not syncing up is because the oscillators themselves are not in tune. If I go ahead and play a note, change to my sawtooth, mix between them. I'll go ahead and tune them up. Now they're pretty similar. I'm using a Disting Mark III because it has a very simple octave change control. Now they're in the same octaves, octave below, or higher. And I can tune them to musical intervals. That's one sound, detuned oscillators or oscillators at intervals. When they're in unison, the sound is not too dissimilar from our modulated square wave. Now let's say you want an even fatter sound than that. You could add more oscillators, You'd need a mixer then to combine them to bring them back into the Mother 32, or you can use this type of module known as a waveform animator. I happen to have a Super Saw Tour by Happy Nerding here. It's based on the design of the Roland JP8000 and 8080. There's other choices available, some of them based on the design originally shown by Bertie Hutchins back in Electronotes ages ago. They run anywhere from under $100 to a few hundred. 
To connect the Super Saw Tor, I'm going to hijack this audio output for now, take a multiple or a copy of the sawtooth that I'm running through the data, and take that to the input on the Super Saw Tor, then take the output of the Saw Tor and run that to my input on the data. There you see it's waveform in blue. And now a copy of that is coming back to my external audio input. I'll switch back to the sawtooth wave. This is the mother sawtooth. And now with a saw tour added in. Very thick animated sound there. You can change the saw tour back to just his own sawtooth. And let's hear it in isolation. Or mix in the animated versions and go for very slow animation to busier animations. Then let's mix back in the Moog's own waveform. Now you notice the sound is hollowing out a bit when we mix in the mother sawtooth with the output from the Super Saw Tour. And that's because there's a phase problem in between the two. If I change the Saw Tour's mix to play just the source sawtooth, you notice that it's a ramp up where the mother is a ramp down. As a result, somewhere in the middle here, they almost cancel each other out. Well, the solution to that is to have a control voltage utility inside your modular. Something like an inverting attenuator, or something with more features in it, like this erogenous tones levitate, which is the Swiss Army knife that I personally love. So I'm going to take the output from my Super Saw Tour, take it to one of the inputs on the levitate, and route that back out to the data, which goes into the external input on the Mother 32, hold a note, and start bringing up the input in its original phase to begin with, start mixing it back in. Okay, there's that out of phase waveform. But when I change this phase switch, now we get the full harmonic spectrum back again. But what does that sound like if we do it when we've got a mixture of detuned harmonics? There's the original mixture between the two. Here is the Super Saw Tour inverted. We get back more of the original character of the sawtooth. Now, in general, I love having inverting mixers around so I can play around with different combinations of waveforms from my oscillators or maybe even outputs from my filters. But you hear where it makes a big difference with this waveform animator, which happens to invert the phase of the sawtooth coming from the mother. It's not like the inverted sound is a bad sound, it's just merely a different sound. Now, there's a lot more you can do to this patch. For example, the Super Saw Tour does have voltage control over the spread between its different phase shifted versions of the sawtooth waveforms. An envelope is an excellent choice to run to the spread amount, but let's try a few other performance oriented ideas. For example, I could take the velocity output from my fader host and run that to my Super Saw Tour. I want to play a soft note, slow animation. I'm going to play a hard note, very deep animation. I can instead use aftertouch. Or I can use my mod wheel. Tune the initial amount down. This is why you like having control voltage inputs on whatever parameters you can get on your modules. And for that matter, more modulation sources, such as a more capable MIDI to control voltage converter. Anyway, that's just a real quickie movie to show you ways of fattening up the sound of a semi-modular 1BCO synth like the Moog Mother 32. In the coming year, I'm going to be spending a lot of time showing how to combine different modules with the Mother to create a wide variety of sounds.